Hey fellow Blender Maniacs, this is Alex Cordobard from BlenderMania3D.com and today we're going to be taking a look at how to make this really cool animation using the self-fracture add-on, force fields, and many more. So we're going to take a look at how to do this. You could also use what we're going to learn in this tutorial, the techniques and the skills, to make many different things as well. Such as, right here we got an exploding wall. Who doesn't like explosions anyway? So an exploding wall an exploding floor, or as we're doing here, a planet exploding. So the imagination is the limit. You could make whatever it is that you want. However, here we're gonna be learning how to do this. And then, like I said, you can use the techniques in many different ways. All right, let's get right to it. Let's create a new file. Yeah, let me try that again. All right, there we go. And we're gonna delete the default cube, X, delete, and add a UV sphere. Shift A, add mesh, UV sphere. All right, let's go ahead and get the texture for this sucker. We're gonna go to textures.com. Now this is a great site, just create a free account and you could download some textures. We're gonna search for rock. And under rock, you could take whatever one you want. This one looks actually pretty sick as I see it actually. Um, we're going to be using this one right here, though. This rock texture right here. Again, feel free to use whatever texture you want. Just make sure to download the medium albedo or color map, the medium normal map, and the medium roughness map. All right, I already have those downloaded. So once you have them downloaded, head back into Blender, and let's go ahead and add these to our UV sphere. Go to the material tab, which is this nuclear or beach ball looking icon. We're going to click on new. Then under here, we're going to change it. Actually, let's do this in the node editor. Go to the bottom left until you get the crosshair. Left click and drag out to split the viewport. And we're going to change this window to shader editor. I still call it node editor. I'm stuck in 2.7, guys. I'm going to hit the end key to close off that panel. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and add in those three textures. So shift A, add in a texture, uh, image texture, which is right there. And I'm just going to, with this selected, I'm going to hit shift D, shift D, and copy it twice so that we have three of them because we have three textures. For the first one, I'm going to click open and go ahead and open up that color map or albedo map and I'm going to connect the color right here into the base color of the principled shader. Let's go ahead and change this to material or actually shading mode, EV rendered mode which is the last sphere right here. So you can see that we have our texture there. It's looking a little bit blocky. Let's right click, shade smooth. Ah, that's better. All right. So this texture adds in the color of it, pretty self-explanatory. Now one thing that you will see is that the texture, the shininess and the non-shininess part of it is kind of just layered all over it. We kind of want the roughness map to tell Blender where it's gonna be shiny and where it's not gonna be shiny. On the second one, we're gonna click open and we're gonna to go to the roughness map. And when we plug in the color right here, into the roughness right there, you will see that happens. And we're also going to change the color space to non-color for non-color data because it's a black and white image. And now you can see that it's not just shiny or matte everywhere, but it is shiny or matte depending on this texture. All right, sweet. And then our last one, we're going to click open, goes there, and we're going to get the normal map. Now what the normal map does is it helps to fake shadows on your models by telling Blender to fake shadows in certain places so that it looks like it has bumps and crevices. And this is really cool because this does this without adding any detail. Now we're going to take the color input or output into the normal right there. And you can see what it's doing right there. We got to change a couple things. First, we're going to change this to non-color data. We're going to hit shift A, add a vector, and go to normal map. And then just drop this in the middle right there. And now check it out. It looks like our sphere has 
some depths and crevices and all that good stuff and we didn't even add any geometry now of course the strength here dictates the strength of the normal as you can see we could really exaggerate it to where it looks like an old prune or put it to zero where there's nothing i'm just going to leave it at the default one all right sweet we are done with that now we're going to go to the fun part which is using the cell fracture add-on I'm going to go into solid view here as well too so that it's a little bit quicker and first we need to, to enable this add-on go to edit preferences and under add-ons you can see mine is already enabled but search for cell and you'll find the object cell fracture all right cool next to get this working just go to object with your object selected go to quick effects and click on cell fracture and then you get all these beautiful options here, which we're not really going to take a look at any of them. We're just going to change the noise right here. But you can see that you could change whether the pieces are small or big, sharp edges, smooth interior, etc., etc. So on a different file, you could go ahead and play around with these different settings if you'd like and see what they do. Now the noise right here basically uh, adds noise so that the cell fracturing is not even or is more random we're gonna put this to let's bump this up to 0.5 and then click OK and it's gonna take a little bit of a, a little time and boom check it out we now have our sphere that is fractured into many different pieces now it still has the original sphere in there so what we could do is select the original sphere and just go ahead and delete that because we no longer need it all right check it out and if we go to our shading mode you can see that we have the texture applied to there that we put on before how sweet is that but now it's all individual pieces oh my god that is so satisfying for some reason just taking one of these try it guys just try it just take a piece and take it out it's like taking a bite out of a cake all right sweet now let's get on with the rest shall we what we want to do now is go ahead and make this explode out. So obviously we're going to want to make these uh, physics objects. I'm going to left click and drag, select all these pieces, make sure I have them all selected. Nope, there's a lonely piece right there. All right, let me try that again. Select all the pieces. All right, there we go. And I'm going to go to object right here. And I'm going to, going to go to rigid body add active so this is going to add an active rigid body to these pieces and now if i hit the space bar to play you can see it just falls down pretty boring all right so let's go ahead and make this more interesting shall we i'm gonna hit gz bring this up shift a let's add a plane temporarily and with this plane selected i'm going to go to object uh where is it rigid body add passive so now this will add act as a passive and now if we hit play check it out how cool is that so just right there we have so much satisfaction in one simple little animation so of course you can use this effect to create rubble and whatnot however that's not what we're going for in this tutorial we want to make it exploding so let's go ahead and do just that how do we make it so that these pieces do not fall down yes you guessed it gravity no not like interstellar but quite similar what we're going to do is go over here to the scene tab and we're going to turn off gravity yep and now when we hit play once again nothing happens as if we don't have the objects passive but i mean we don't have the objects as active rigid bodies but we do and so now with gravity off, also another cool thing you could do is right now you can see the gravity is set to negative 9.8. If we change this and set it to negative, let's say 0.5 and play it, check it out. We got a slow motion ball crumbling down. Anyways, back to the tutorial. I'm just showing you these cool little alternatives that you could do with this. Let's turn off gravity. Now that we got the gravity turned off, what we want to do is go ahead and add in a force field. Shift A, add in a 
force field and we're going to add in a force force field. So right there, the first one. And now if we go to settings of the force field right here, you can see that we have a bunch of different options, but the main one we're going to focus on is strength. Let's play this right now and check it out. It's moving our sphere or our rocks upwards like that. Cool. What we want to do is for it to move out in an even centered order. So what we're going to do is select the force field, G, Z, and just bring it up into the middle of the sphere like that. Let's, play, let's hit play now and check it out. How cool is that? So depending on how much force you want it to have and how fast you want it to go, just increase the strength right here. If we put, say, 10 and then hit shift left arrow to go back to beginning. You can see we got that there right there. Let's exaggerate it a lot and put 100 and play that and boom, we got a massive explosion. All right, I'm going to put this to 10 and there we go. Now, of course, if you wanted it to be kind of like rubble or stuff like that, you could put the gravity back on. Let's put this back to negative nine. And if we play this, you can see that right now it's not doing much because the force field is not enough. But if we go to the force field, change this to a hundred, it will now use the force field with the gravity. But again, for this example, we're turning the gravity off. And I'm going to put this back to 10. All right, sweet. So let's get on with the rest of it. We're almost done. Now we got to add that light in the middle. To do that with the empty or with the empty, which is a force field selected, I'm going to hit shift S cursor to selected and then shift A, add in a mesh or not a mesh, add in a light point light and go into the light settings here. We're going to change the color to a bluish color. By the way, let's make sure to also delete our other lights. So selecting this light right here, I'm going to hit X, delete. There we go. That way we only have this light in here. And I'm going to change the power of this to 1000. Boom, like that. And I'm going to make it a little bit of a deeper blue. Sweet. Let's go to the world options here. Change the color background. By selecting color background, let's make it all the way dark by just scrolling the mouse wheel down. And there we go. Now, a couple things to make this look cool. By the way, I'm going to delete the ground plane because we don't need it. We're going to go ahead and add in some volumetric lighting, some bloom effect, and some of that good stuff. To do that, let's go over here to the render settings. We're going to turn on bloom. Then we're also going to turn on under volumetrics. Well, for the volumetric, we're going to first add a cube. Shift A, add a mesh cube, and scale this cube up to where it encompasses the whole sphere. I'm going to scale it up just a little bit more like that. All right, and this is going to be the domain for our volumetrics of our scene. With the cube selected, we're going to go to the material tab. Add a new material, and instead of principled BSDF, we're going to select principled volume right here. And then right here in the nodes, we're going to change it from the surface right here to obviously volume as we want it to be a volumetric object. And now check it out. We have volume in our scene. However, it's so dense with this density option that we don't really see much. So let's put this down to, let's try point 0.1. And now you can see we get these cool light ray effects because we have volumetrics in there. And of course, you could change the color of this volume here. However, I'm just going to leave it. Actually, I'm going to make it a light bluish color. And there we go. All right, now with the lamp, I'm going to try to put a power of 5,000. Boom, and really crank it up. All right, sweet. Now let's hit shift left arrow, go back to the beginning. And you can see that we have one issue, and that is 
if we hit shift left arrow at the beginning of the animation we have these this light shining through the cracks and again that's because we have uh, cracks in our cell fracture so to fix that what we could easily do is just animate the value of the light at frame one we're gonna put the value at zero and hit the I key with the mouse hovered over it so it has a value of zero then we're gonna play this a little bit and of course right now we can't see much but let's go to solid view and just go to where it starts to the cracks start to separate and open a little bit more so right right around here on frame six I'm gonna put it a value of zero still and then on frame seven or actually let's make this a little more gradual so instead of going to frame seven and making it 5,000 let's go to frame 15 and make it five one two three five thousand and hit the I key so now if we go to the EV shading mode shift left arrow you can see that we don't have those issues anymore at frame one where there's no uh, cracks and the light shouldn't be going through but if we hit play you can see that as it cracks open the light starts to break through how cool is that effect guys super cool all right so that is the tutorial all right now last thing i'm going to do is just hit shift a add in a light point light and i'm going to add another point light right here just as kind of a side light i'm going to put the volume of or the power of this to 500 and this will be just a second source of light right here uh, kind of like uh, it's not three-point lighting because we only have two lights in here but just to give it a little more character and now I'm gonna select the camera bring it in there make sure that this other light is kind of off to the side and if we hit play spacebar check it out how cool is that I might turn this down to 200 all right, sweet. So make sure to share your results on blendermania3.com on the forums. Hope you enjoyed it and please modify this little tutorial to whatever, however you want it to look, uh, either if it's a wall exploding or a planet exploding, etc., etc. So with that, very nicely done. I will see you in the next tutorial. Ciao for now. Au revoir.